John Bassler Show. Jeff Bliss of Pacific Watch for the John Bassler Show is here to help us follow a very unhappy story in California. The audit of the University of California headquarters turned up a lot of money that was either secret or not apparent to observers from the outside until that audit. $175 million, which, of course, given the system is over billions and billions, $30 billion, is small, but it's not good that the Janet Napolitano, the leader of the UC system, cannot easily explain how this money was spent. Jeff, a very good evening to you. Uh, during the week, you kept me informed that some of the details of how the money was spent emerged. Uh, apparently, they like giving lavish parties to departing employees. Is that upsetting to California, or is that just business as usual? Well, it's both. Uh, but the problem is now for Janet Napolitano and the UC system is that all of these things are starting to snowball. It's this big snowball that's getting bigger as it goes downhill. And really, it's becoming impossible to stop. So now that you got to the point where you not only have uh, key media uh, calling for her to resign, uh, but you also have members of her own party, the Democratic Party, which is everything here in California, saying not only do we need to put new uh, strictures on, on the UC system, which is usually ha gets a hands-off treatment, uh, and that's part of that because of constitutional uh, law here, but they're also saying is we not only need more oversight, but we need to do something about leadership. And so this this scandal is really growing and growing each day. I understand that the administrators within the system are changing their opinion of Janet Napolitano. Never the, things are shifting slowly, Jeff. But then again, the audit was April 25th. So I guess in California, this is moving quickly for bu bureaucracy. People are backing away. Are anecdotes coming forward of... of of people knowing about this or worrying about this over years, or is this still a shock to the whole system? Well, it's definitely a shock, and certainly to a number of people in Sacramento and, and other parts of the state. But the, the the stories are starting to come forward. And, you know, one of the things you kind of alluded to is that it, it's not just a story about $175 million put in a slush fund, while at the same time Janet Napolitano, the president of the UC system, was going to Sacramento and saying, my gosh, we need more money. We're going to really have to jack up tuition. But it's also the audit itself. What she did or what it's been alleged she or her office did is pressured the 10 different campuses to change their answers to the auditor. This resulted in the state auditor saying that in the 17 years she's been engaged in this, she's never, ever seen anything like this before. And really, that's, that's where the, the biggest uh, heartburn is coming from. You know, it's like the old story. It's not always the crime that gets you, it's the cover-up. So now that we have three UC campuses coming back and changing their responses after having, those having been changed or pressured to change from the president's office. I see. That. I, now I understand. UC Irvine changed from satisfied to very satisfied. UC San Diego changed from dissatisfied to satisfied. And UC Santa Cruz changed from poor to good. Now, Jeff... That means that there's got a lot of explaining to do at Irvine, San Diego, and Santa Cruz, the people who bent to that pressure. True, but everybody realizes that the leverage the president's office in the UC system has over the campuses. We've got three different levels in the higher ed here in California. There's the UC system, which is 10 campuses, the crown jewel. You have the California state system, and then you have the community college system. And the UC system, as I mentioned, gets a hands-off from the state because of the way the Constitution was written. The law went into effect in the late 1800s, and it says, basically, you've got to fund them. They get to do what they want. But now they're saying, hey, wait a minute, uh, that, that's going to change because you can't do things like have slush funds. You can't pressure the campuses. You know, you, you can't do that at the other systems, the community college and the Cal State system. But in the UC system, the president is so powerful that they can do things like that. And that's is what's causing the legislators to say, we've got to make some serious changes here. Reform is due. There's a report that emails from the office of the president revealed a uh, communication that contradicts Napolitano's uh, testimony so far. Is there a criminal inquiry coming? Well, that's a good question. I, I don't think they're there yet. There's been some move, uh, uh, at least at the AG level, to kind of keep that down. Uh, to tamp that down. But uh, there are people talking about that. 
more than more likely than anything, though, is the reform first. And you, like I said, you have a number of people now in the key media outlets and in the legislature saying, OK, time for a change. Uh, Jan Napolitano is not the right person to be president, especially if we're going to enact reforms. And Napolitano and in her response to the media, her response to requests for interviews, has she come up with a satisfactory explanation? Does she have any defenders, Jeff? She doesn't have any defenders, really, unless, you know, there are people, spokespeople from her office giving official statements. But she's saying, you know, there was some money put aside, but it's nowhere near $175 million. She keeps coming back and saying it's only, only $38 million. But remember, she went to the state legislature, and she's been telling donors and parents and students and others, we don't have enough money to run things. And then they find out they have these, you know, tens of millions of dollars, maybe $175 million socked away. They're having these lavish parties. You know, she claims, wait a minute, they were paid for by donors or out of other funds. But optics are bad there and in a number of other places. All right, let's move to a positive story. Water, water, a cup of water in California. Last year and the last two years, we've been doing the drought story, those spectacular pictures of reservoirs empty. Now they're overflowing. Is this good news for California? Well, it would seem so on the surface, no pun intended. But the problem with California uh, in, in terms of this story is twofold. One is during the time of the extreme drought, they pumped so much water out of the aquifers that parts of the Central Valley dropped, dropped dramatically as much as 28 feet or more. And so you have massive parts of the, of the Central Valley, America's breadbasket, that have been you know, sucked dry. So there's that problem. But even though we have this surface water, so to speak, California for decades has really pushed back against building new reservoirs and new ways to channel the water for future use and has continued the same thing that they've done since the Edmund Pat Brown days. And that's essentially taking all that excess water and, and sending it out to sea. So what happens is you just, you're, you're just scratching the surface again, surface water, sorry for the pun, but you you just have basically these small lakes or reservoirs. And what's going to happen is we'll go through a drought period again. It always happens here. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And, and we're not making we're not taking any steps to preserve the water that we do get. Jeff Bliss of the Pacific Watch for the John Bachelor Show. I'm John Bachelor. This is the John Bachelor Show.